What's up guys, Commonwealth Snow here, and today I'm going to be showing you the best way to torrent in 2021. Now, you should know there are quite a few different torrenting programs you can use. For example, more on the Windows side, you have uTorrent, uh, BitTorrent, you can also use more elegant applications such as QubitTorrent. And if you're not about that GUI lifestyle, you also have the choice of torrenting programs that solely run in the terminal, for example, transmission. Now, I'm going to be showing you, in my personal opinion, the best GUI torrenting program, which is Qubit Torrent. Now, I say the best in my opinion, but in reality, Qubit Torrent is the best GUI torrenting program to use. Due to its features, its open source nature, and its privacy respecting etiquette. uTorrent is the worst because I'm pretty sure they implemented a Bitcoin a cryptocurrency miner in their software at some point, so, you know, not the most trustworthy people, I think. Now, some common misconceptions I see online sometimes is that torrenting is illegal. Now, in most parts of the world, from what I've gathered, tor torrenting itself isn't illegal, as torrenting is just a way to share files, it's peer-to-peer sh file sharing. But when you share files that are copyrighted, for example, if you're torrenting a TV show, that would be considered illegal in some countries, including the United Kingdom and the United States. Now, if you're somewhere like Poland, just the country that came to mind, you can download copyrighted material if it is only for personal use. So, interesting footnote there, but there you go. Now, I'm going to be showing you how to download Qubit Torrent and also some settings that you should enable to maximize your privacy and also make sure that you get good torrents with the maximum download speeds, maximum upload speeds, and generally a very nice torrenting experience for all of your Linux distributions. So, I'm right now, I'm in my Linux Mint virtual box. Very nice, freshly set up. So, the first step, obviously, is you're going to need to make sure your system is up to date. Now you should do this with any program you're going to be downloading, but first step is always the most important. Now in the case of Linux Mint, we can go over to the included software manager, which I do believe is just called software manager, but you can also install it straight from the terminal on Debian and Arch based systems. Now Qubit Torrent may come pre-installed on your system, it does come pre-installed on Manjaro, but in the case of Linux Mint, it does not. So we are going to be downloading the top one here, which I believe is the .deb version of it. You also have the option to download a flat pack, but we'll be sticking with this one for now. It is the most popular on the software repository. So we can download it here, very quick download and click launch. Gives you this little legal notice here, only shows it once, just going to click agree. And here we are, we are now in Qubit Torrent. So, first of all you're going to notice all these different menus here and all these different tabs. Now, you shouldn't need to worry about any of these most of the time, they're just there for some information you may find interesting or you may find useful in the future. But, no need to worry about them for now. Now what we're going to do is going to head over to Tools and click on Preferences. Now we're going to bring up these menus. So in this Behaviour Settings panel here, you do have a couple things that you can check out. You don't need to change any of these when you're getting started, so you shouldn't worry about this Behaviour tab too much, but the Download tab, we're going to change a few settings. So first of all, the setting you might want to change is your default save path here. So if you don't want your torrent to save on the host disk, but for example you want it to go to a an external disk drive, you can navigate the all of your disk drives through the GUI here. You can also copy the .torrent files if you wish, and you cannot and you also have the option to download the finished downloads. As when you finish downloading a torrent, it will automatically start seeding that download to other users or the peers I should say. So we're going to navigate to the connection tab here. Now you do want to make sure your protocol is TCP and UTP as to maximize the 
successful download rate and speed of your connection. Now if you're having a bit of trouble downloading some torrents that you know are sound and are actually and people are seeding, you may want to just randomize your port used for incoming connections, but it can differ from person to person, from system to system. Now you do have these connection limits here. You shouldn't need to worry about these too much if you're just starting, but if you're getting quite deep into the torrenting scene and you have a whole rig set up for torrenting and seeding, you may want to change some of these. Now if you're for example in a shared building or a dormitory and your system administrator are monitoring your connection and you don't want to and you don't want them to find out that you're torrenting, you may want to opt for using a proxy server. Now torrenting itself isn't illegal, so you won't need to worry about that, but certain internet service providers and like I say, system administrators may not look fondly on your torrenting. So if you have any issues about that, I would recommend connecting to a proxy server. Now we're going to head over to speed. Now here, you can set your global rate limits for your upload and download speeds. Now if you're living by yourself and you're paying for your own internet connection, there's no need to change this. You're going to download and upload what you download and upload. But if you're, for example, on a metered connection or you're in the household with other people, you might want to introduce a upload and download limit for this. Now, Qubit Torrent also gives you the option to schedule a different set of upload and download limits, as it says here, and you can change the time for when this is enabled. So if your family or spouse are out for the day, between the hours of 9 and 5, you can set it so it will use more of your broadband from 9 to 5. And then go down to a lower level, a lower download limit or upload limit after that time has expired. So pretty useful if you're not living by yourself or living with spouse or family and you don't want to be using all of the internet. Of course, this will differ from if you're using Wi-Fi or Ethernet. So if you're connected straight into your router, it would probably be better to set a download limit if you're expecting other people to be using it, but if you're using Wi-Fi you will naturally be limited anyway to the speed of your Wi-Fi dongle. Now we're going to head over to the BitTorrent tab here. Now this is one thing you should definitely do and that is over here to the encryption mode you should require encryption. Now this will have a much bigger impact if you're using a proxy, this kind of complements having a proxy, but I do recommend requiring encryption anyway and to also enable anonymous mode. Now to learn more about anonymous mode, we can actually click on this more information tab here. So I'm just gonna copy that link, paste it in there. And here we have an in-depth explanation as to what enabling anonymous mode will do for you. Now, to put it simply, enabling anonymous mode won't make you 100% invincible. There's always there's always that chance that an attacker or a system administrator can find out where the downloads are coming from. But as it says here in Qubit Torrent version 3.3, your peer ID will no longer include the client's fingerprint, meaning you will blend more into the crowd. And since torrenting is a peer-to-peer -peer network activity, it will also not expose your IP or listening port directly to other peers. So this can help you in terms of your privacy, but also kind of obscure yourself from people who may be monitoring your network. So it's an always good idea to have this ticked no matter what. But especially if you're using a VPN as this, like I've said before, this will also complement that and make it much more harder for any attacker or, or administrator to monitor your activities while torrenting. So I'm just going to close out this. Now you, can, now you do also have the option to for your torrenting queues, for example, you can change how many active downloads you have. So if you have a slower internet speed, you might want to change this to a lower number like one so you can focus all of your bandwidth on that one torrent. But also if you have more, if you have a, a greater internet speed, so you, for example, you have, um, you have fiber optic or you have gigabit speeds, you might want to increase this. When you do download a torrent and it's finished downloading, your qubit torrent will automatically start seeding that. And it's always a very, very good idea to seed your downloads to at least a one-to-one -one ratio, just to give back to the community and to not be a leech. And we all know leeches are the worst thing in humanity, so you don't want to be one of them. You can also choose to have qubit torrent start up 
when you start up your computer to automatically start seeding those downloads. So if you have a large collection of Linux distributions and Linux ISOs, you can automatically set Qubit Torrent to seed those to other peers. So that's about it. This just goes to show how simple and easy to set up Qubit Torrent actually is, private respecting and secure torrenting. So thank you very much for watching this very simple video. I hope it does help you and I hope you can download as many Linux ISOs as you possibly can. Make sure to always seed. Have a good day everybody and I will see you later. Bye for now.